full screen tayo and earphones on. Alright, chapter 9, Special Books of Original Entry, Convenience and Division of Labor. Thus far, the objective of all the previous chapters was to illustrate the concepts and procedures meaning how things are done. Journal entries are made in the general journal and then posted to the general ledger where the T accounts are used. The trial balance is generated, the worksheet is prepared, and finally the financial statements. To illustrate these concepts, however, only representative scenarios were used as examples without regard to the volume of transactions and a manual accounting system was also assumed. Correct. Okay. In the real world, large businesses having thousands of customers and suppliers use computerized systems and specialized softwares. However, these companies did not grow overnight. They started as a small business using manual accounting systems and as business grew, they needed to computerize. So, ang sinasabi natin dito sa unang part ng chapter 9, from chapter 1 up to chapter 8, ang assumption natin ay manual system plus we did not take into account kung gaano kadami me yung transactions. So, we did it the conceptual way without taking into consideration efficiency. So, pinakita natin yung usual steps, yung usual procedures, meaning to say, we discussed how it would be effective to use the ordinary procedures. But does not, it does not necessarily entail efficiency. Okay? Therefore, here we imagine a growing business employing still a manual accounting system with hundreds of customers and suppliers. Furthermore, the concepts involved herein is the same as a computerized ledger accounting system. So, dito naman sa chapter 9, we will take into account volume of the transactions. And therefore, kung maramihan na, aba, po pwede pa rin ba yung usual na ginagawa natin? Okay? We then examine the consequences of recording under the usual manner, yung usual manner na tinutukoy natin dito, yung pag-journalize sa general ledger, paggawa ng T-account sa general journal, pag propose sa trial balance, yung usual na ginagawa natin. And introduce a new way. Ano ba yung new way na ito? Okay. Ito yung special journals na subject matter natin dito sa chapter 9. On how we can expedite recording and make it more convenient. Under the usual way of recording, only the general journal is used as the book of original entry. Correct. Ang tawag din natin dito sa general journal, it is the book of initial entry. Tama? All transactions with credit customers would be shown under one general ledger account, yung tinatawag natin accounts receivable. All transactions with credit suppliers would be shown under one general ledger account also, yung tinatawag natin accounts payable, very usual. Okay. An overview of the quote and quote usual way Okay, that we are pertaining to here would be as follows. Okay, pagka meron kang sales on account, debit, accounts receivable, credit sales. Yung accounts receivable na yon, papasok siya dun sa ledger account, sa T-account mo, na accounts receivable ang tawag. Pagkatapos sa general ledger, na galing sa general journal, papasok siya dun sa trial balance. Ayun yung receivable na 87,000. From the journal entry, ipinos mo sa t -account, Account, pupunta sa trial balance. Yung trial balance na ito, yan yung ginagamit natin as an initial step sa paggawa ng worksheet. Tama? And then, eventually, we will generate the financial statements and then we will present them to the intended users. Now, sabi natin dito, okay, let us take note of the following points. Kung ganito yung usual manner, punahin natin. Sabi. Hindi natin sinasabi na obsolete na ito, hindi natin sinasabi na mali na ito. It is perfectly correct pa rin. But, let us take other things into consideration. So, punahin natin. Two points. Number one, in the initial recording, there would be as many journal entries in the general journal as there are number of transactions regardless of how repetitive or usual most of these transactions are. So, imagine mo ito. Okay? Debit accounts receivable, credit sales. Hindi ba napaka-usual na transaction yan? If you sell something on account, if you sell your merchandise dice on account. Very usual transaction yan. What if ilang libong ganyan ang mangyayari sa loob ng isang araw? Ibig mo bang sabihin? Kung ilang libo, say for example, dalawang libong beses nangyari yan in one day, which is very possible for large companies. Ibig mo bang sabihin?
sabihin, 2,000 times mong gagawin din yung journal entry na yan. Okay? Although it is correct, will it be efficient on the part of the accountant or the company to do that? Alright? We're not saying it is wrong, but we're saying it becomes inefficient at some point. Alright? Number two, in the posting sa initial recording yung class. Alright? Sa posting naman, yung initial recording na tinutukoy, eto. Alright? O sa posting naman, dito naman sa T-account. Alright? In the posting, All transactions involving credit sales would be posted to a single account's receivable T-account. And all credit purchases with suppliers will be posted also to a single T-account called Accounts Payable. So lahat ng mga pinagbentahan mo, ipopost mo dun sa isang T-account na ang pangalan ay Accounts Receivable. Lahat ng mga inutang mo din, Accounts Payable, ipopost mo din sa nag-iisang T-account na ang tawag ay Accounts Payable. Tama? O ano naman ang magiging consequence nohan? Later on, ipopoint out natin. Ito na pala. Okay? Now, let us analyze the two points. Sabi natin dyan. Number one, in the first point, notice that the setup presupposes that the one who made the entry in the general journal should also be the one to post it in the general ledger. Ibig sabihin, itong setup na ito, yung usual way na tinatawag natin, it presupposes na kung sino daw yung gumawa ng journal entry na ito, eh siya din yung magpo-post. Bakit ganun ang assumption natin? Ituloy natin. Since it would be more difficult and time-consuming aside from the risk of miscommunication if these tasks are assigned to different individuals. Oo nga naman. Kung iba yung nag-journalize at iba yung magpo-post sa general ledger, malamang sa hindi, miscommunication could occur. And therefore, hindi magiging accurate yung records. So it presupposes na kung sinong gumawa ng una, siya din gagawa ng pangalawa. Nako po. In addition, with hundreds and possibly thousands of similar or like transactions, the general journal would be filled with repetitive journal entries of the same nature. Tama. Tulad ng sabi natin kanina. Tama? O, let's take for example. <clears throat> to emphasize further, take the following transactions of May Ann de Castro wholesalers, which is started with an initial capital of 100,000 pesos. December 31, 2020. Ah, uh, December 2020, I should say. From December 1 to December 11. Okay? Nung December 1, ano nangyari? May Ann sold merchandise on account to R. Aquino Grocers as per invoice 111. Terms is N over 45. The amount is 15,000. Sold merchandise on account to J. Bermal Traders per invoice 112. Terms as follows. Sold merchandise to A. Caballero Company invoice 113. Terms as follows. Sold merchandise on account to M. Dagarag Exporters invoice 114. Terms as follows. So makikita mo sa 1 sold, 5 sold, sold, sold. Pare-parehas na sale on account. Lahat yan. So under the usual way, ibig mong sabihin, debit accounts receivable. Isa, accounts receivable sales. Pangalawa, pangatlo, pangapat. Okay, you see? It is a repetitive transaction. It is a very usual transaction. Yet, under the usual way, it would be done like this. See? Ilang journal entries ang mangyayaring ganyan. E dito sa illustration natin, apat lang na customers yan. E papano kung ilang libo, ilang daan yan. Okay? So, very inefficient. Eto na. Sales on account is a usual transaction. Notice in the preceding journal entries that the accounts receivable as well as the sales on account were debited and credited respectively the same number of times the transactions occurred. Four times in the journal entries and four times also in the general journal. Okay? Under the T accounts, accounts receivable and sales. Imagine this happening hundreds or even thousands of times during the day. Sabi. When teachers like me teach in front of a live audience, we derive satisfaction to some extent from the interaction with students. Yung mga simpleng pagtawa mo sa mga jokes namin, they mean something to us. They make us happy. But teaching in front of the camera is a different thing. We don't even know if you're there. We don't even know if you're listening. So a simple like dun sa ating video, or a simple present sir, nandito po kami nakikinig, we are watching sir, will inspire us. When teachers like me teach in front of a live audience, we know that you are there. But teaching in front of the camera, is not merely sharing our content. It means sharing our time, our devotion, and above all, our passion. So, yung simpleng pag-subscribe mo sa amin, it lets us know that you are there and we are here to continue what we are doing. So, ngayon pa lang, nagpapasalamat na kami. Diyan sa yung subscription, uh, it inspires us. It, since it inspires me to wake up every morning, prepare discussion materials, and continue what I am doing. So, thank you so much. Please continue sharing and liking and subscribing. Thank you. Therefore, 
therefore, all the, the procedures we have learned or are theoretically correct, it becomes very inconvenient to implement them. Alright? So, anong solusyon? Later. Number two muna, second point. Doon sa pangalawang point, ano ba yung second point natin kanina? Our second point kanina sa posting. Okay? Lahat daw nung receivable, pinupost sa isang T-account. Lahat nung accounts payable, pinupost sa isang T-account din. So, anong consequence nun? Ito naman, number two. Second point. In the second point, knowing the updated amount owed to a particular customer, ayan yung ating, owed by a particular customer, yan yung ating receivable, could not be prepared. Sabi dyan, would be all most impossible to know. A schedule of accounts receivable could not be prepared. Thus, collection efforts like billing, mailing, customer statements would be difficult. Ganon din naman sa accounts payable. Pag tinanong ka, ilan yung receivable natin kay customer XYZ as of this very point in time? Nako, problema yan. Kasi isang T-account lang pinagpostihan mo. Okay? Ang sabi dito, a possible remedy, may sinasuggest naman siyang remedy, is to maintain a T-account for each customer. Nako po, pag gano'n naman ginawa mo, gumawa ka ng T-account bawat isang customer, edi there would be as many T-accounts, there would be as many accounts receivable T-accounts for each customer. E paano kung malaking company yan? at ang dami mong customer, edi punong-puno na ng T-account yung general ledger mo. E ganun din naman for the payables. Kung gano'n kadami yung supplier mo, ganun din kadami yung T-accounts mo. With regards sa accounts receivable, ganun ba yun? O, so, ang mangyayari, ganito. Therefore, the resulting trial balance would appear as follows. O, ang dami mong accounts receivable, ang dami mong accounts payable dun sa yung trial balance. So, mangyayari, ang haba niyan. What if the company has hundreds or even thousands of customers and suppliers? Imagine how long the trial balance would look like. Therefore, this approach makes the general ledger unmanageably large. Correct yun. The succeeding discussions will address the problems posed by the two points as presented and analyzed above. Ito yung solusyon dun sa dalawang punto at dalawang uh, analysis dun sa dalawang punto natin. Ang sagot dun, tulad ng sabi natin, is special journals. In order to promote, the keyword is efficiency, economy, and control. Control, okay? Businesses use special journals instead of only the general journal as book of original entry. So ngayon, hindi na lang yung general journal ang book of original entry mo. Meron ka ng tinatawag na sales journal na kung saan dun mo ire-record lahat ng transactions regarding sales, particularly your sales on account. Ayan. Cash receipts journal. Dito papasok yung mga cash receipts mo. Purchase Purchases journal, all purchases on account. Cash disbursement journal, lahat ng cash disbursements. General journal, o oh, ito pa rin yung general journal as we know it. Transactions or things that cannot be recorded in any of these special journals will still be recorded dun sa general journal. Parang magiging catch basin original, uh, book of original entry natin, yung general journal. The use of special journals greatly reduce work, correct? In entering data and posting to the general ledger. Unlike with the use of only the general journal, work could now be divided ayan, among different employees since each journal is specifically for certain transactions only. Correct yun. Diba sabi natin kanina dun sa first observation point natin, it presupposes yung usual manner or yung old way na ginagawa natin, presupposes that the one who made the journal entry would also be the one to make the posting. Kasi baka magkaroon ng miscommunication, tama nga naman. But under special books of original entry, ah, po pwede yung division of labor. Kaya kung mapapansin mo, yung title ng ating chapter 9, special books of original entry, meron ditong uh, section, yung kanyang pangalan, yung pinakaunang section natin, convenience and division of labor. Kasi very convenient at saka, oh, yun nga, pwede kang mag-assign. Responsibilities could now be divided and assigned to different individuals. Ayan. This division of labor in turn promotes promotes good internal control due to checks and balances. Yes. With special journals, companies may post to some accounts monthly instead of daily, thus making the posting process easier. Ayan. Special journals address address the problems posed by the first point. So, yung special journal ang kasagutan doon sa first point na napuna natin kanina. Control accounts and subsidiary ledgers. Here, we discuss the problems posed by the second point naman, yung sa posting. Okay. For the same reason that special journals promote convenience and division of labor, at the point of initial record,
rewarding. Ito yung point number one natin. So is also the purpose of control accounts and subsidiary ledgers in the posting. Ito naman yung second point natin kanina. This approach keeps the general ledger to a manageable size and therefore the trial balance as well while keeping the detailed records, keeping detailed records of transactions in the subsidiary ledgers. Errors could also be easily located due to this breakdown and division of labor. So ano mangyayari? Control accounts, may mga control accounts tayo yung tinatawag. Subsidiary accounts, may mga subsidiary accounts tayo yung tinatawag. In the general ledger, we will find accounts receivable there. Only one account title accounts receivable pero sa subsidiary ledger, nandun si customer A, B, and C. So, nakahiwalay. Ibig sabihin, magiging manageable yung size ng ating trial balance. Alright? Pag pinag-add mo si ABC, eh, yun din yung magiging total ni accounts receivable control account dito. Ibang taong hahawak nito iba-iba din yung mga hahawak ng ABC. A division of labor nga. Alright? A general ledger account summarizes the detailed data from the subsidiary ledger. Ito yung summary. Ito yung mga detalyado. Okay? Na record keeping meaning subsidiary ledgers. A subsidiary ledger is a ledger separate from the general ledger that contains a group of related accounts such as a list of customers or suppliers. In the above illustration, the accounts receivable is called a control account because it collects and summarizes data from the subsidiary ledger. Also, in the above illustration, cash and owner's capital are not control accounts. They do not control any account. Yeah. Okay. Saan tayo dito? Therefore, by the use of the special journals, to address the first point and the control accounts to address the second point and subsidiary ledgers an overview of the workflow from initial data entry posting up to the preparation of financial statements would be as follows so kung kanina kung maalala mo yung ating usual workflow under the under the usual way as we have called it kanina okay pakita natin uli ganito general journal journalize dito post doon diretso sa trial balance gawa ng worksheet gawa ng financial statements by the use of special journals and the subsidiary as well as the control accounts, magiging ganito na yung ating flow. Okay? Books of original entry, special journals, sales, purchases, cash receipts, cash disbursement journal, at saka general journal, lahat ng yon iisang accounts receivable, papasok doon, yung subsidiary ledgers dito, it is in support of the 87,000 para hindi mo siya ihahalo mismo doon sa details. Otherwise, tulad nga sabi natin, yung consequences na nabanggit natin daming key accounts, etc. Alright? Then, papasok siya dito sa trial balance, then sa worksheet, and then gagawa ng financial statements. The accounts receivable here would be just one line item representing all of the customers. Ganun din ang mangyayari kung accounts payable ang pinag-uusapan para mas efficient yung ating workflow. Yan. Okay, class. So, that's the bell already. That's it for this meeting. Uh, so, ganun-ganun lang, class. A few minutes of your time every day, imbis na kung ano-ano yung pinapanood mo, just make it a habit to watch our videos uh, bilang tulong na rin dun sa sarili mong pag-aaral. Why? Kasi tatandaan mo, hindi lahat ng nababasa mo ng mag-isa ay maririnig mo. At hindi din lahat ng mga naririnig mo ay mababasa mo. Tulungan yan. So with that, see you in our next meeting. See you in the next lesson.